Good evening and uh, thank you very much for joining us for Season 2, Episode 27 of the Baby Bunting Live Series. I'm Matt Spencer, I'm the, the CEO of Baby Bunting and with me today is Julie Bornikoff, the CEO of the PANDA organisation, PANDA standing for Perinatal Anxiety and Depression Australia. Uh, welcome Julie, it's so nice to have you here tonight. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. It's oh. always a pleasure to be here. Look, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to have you here. And, and tonight's a very special evening where we, we get to talk to people around um, the role of PANDA, uh, what perinatal anxiety and depression is actually and, and who it affects. So, mm. so thank you very much for joining us. And at Baby Bunting, our, our core purpose is to support new and expected parents in the, in the early years of parenthood. And that's very much aligned with a, a lot of the work that PANDA is doing. So we're very proud to be supporting you. Um, and at the moment, in fact, we've got this fundraising campaign. We were raising you know, $2 donations at the point of sale when people shop in store or $2 online. Mm-hmm. And um, you, know, you could donate more if you'd like to, but also we're raising uh, funds through our, through, our, uh, through our store support office as well. Um, we will be taking questions uh, during the session, so if anybody wants to just uh, write some questions, just pop them in the comments box and we'll answer them as best as we can uh, during tonight's uh, presentation. Um, Julie, as we know, parenthood can be a challenge and, um, and certainly in those early stages when you first have a baby, um, it can be quite, quite different, quite challenging for an individual. But for somebody who's struggling with uh, perinatal mental illness or depression or anxiety, it can be a very, very tough time. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think Panda steps in to, to, to help, um, help people in that position. So, um, Julie, first of all, I think it'd be really nice to hear what Panda actually does and, mm. and the role that you play in the community. Most definitely. So Panda's an amazing organisation that's been around for about 37 years this year. Um, we were formed at the table of two women who had their own experience of vulnerability following the birth of their babies and they'd been brought together and connected up through their child maternal health nurse here in Victoria at the time. Um, and from that experience of connecting up and having a discussion about the fact that when they went to their health providers they didn't feel that they understood what they were going through um, and just trying to muddle through and understand their own experience, these women basically formed this movement that became PANDA. Um, As an organisation, we have grown and grown and gone from advocacy and mental health awareness in communities to more now delivering our national mental health service, which is our helpline, um, which provides support. And over the last 12 months, we've provided about 44,000 contacts Mm -hmm. to community um, to support them where they were at. So we deliver a range of service. We educate general practice and primary care providers. Um, we help support communities through our supported playgroups program. We deliver our helpline uh, nationally and just generally try to provide as much information and normalise the experience that people are having, regardless of where they are in the struggles of parenting. So isn't that an amazing history, you know, to think two mm. people can, can, were the genesis of such, a, such an it's important organisation. Mm. Could you just explain what perinatal, per, perinatal mental illness is and really what causes it and And how has COVID really played uh, Mm -hmm. into the space as well over the last 12, 18 months? Yeah. So everyone's experience of mental vulnerability and mental illness is so different. And, you know, really it does occur for many people on a spectrum. So some people may just be, you know, experiencing feelings of anxiety whilst others may have feelings of depression. For some, they experience a bit of both. But, you know, Panda more broadly uh, supports people with a range of uh, mental health illnesses and vulnerabilities, and including people who are experiencing suicidal thoughts um, or, you know, emergent psychosis after the birth of their baby. Uh, and, you know, we meet people where they are. But ultimately, uh, anxiety and depression is something that occurs for people, either when we're talking perinatally, um, in the pregnancy period of the person's uh, life for mum and dad or uh, same-sex partner, or in the first 12 months of baby's life. Um, and, you know, is characterised really by uh, this experience that has come on for many for the first time ever. Um, and, you know, for anx- the, the feeling of anxiety it is, you know, having that feeling that something's not right and then getting caught in a cycle of trying to solve it, getting really physically disrupted. So, you know, racing thoughts, upset tummy, uh, you know, feeling like you can't sleep, can't eat, that constant churning feeling. 
Um, where on the other end of the spectrum, people who are feeling, you know, depressed feel really bogged and worn down, unable to engage with the things that they may have uh, felt, you know, were beneficial to them in the past, unable to ask for help can't sleep, can't eat. So it's a really big experience for people and one that, you know, Panda is really uh, set up to be able to support people around. And, you know, people don't need to be able to talk about what it is they're experiencing when they reach out to us. We'll just work through it with them. Uh, talking about reaching out, how, how do people know when they should be reaching mm. out? I mean, when, when they get to a point of concern and, yeah. and you know, is it just tiredness or is it actually they're they're you know vulnerable at that mm. stage mm. Uh, when how do you how do you identify that point yeah look i think first and foremost the thing that we always try to tell people is that there are no shoulds and musts and no right times and you know parenting is one of those things and if you have a look on the panda website you know we have quite a bit around near enough's good enough parenting because we know that there's no rule book you know there, there certainly isn't um, so we just say that to people that, you know, regardless of whether or not your experience is feeling really extreme or as bad as your neighbours or your friends, it's how, what it's doing to your life. So if you feel like it's starting to impact on the way you have a relationship with your bub, with your partner, with your broader family and supports, or with yourself and your self, sense of self-identity, we really do say just reach out. There's no right or wrong time. Um, often we do find that people have left it too long when they call us and really, uh, you know, feel like they've eroded their sense of confidence in being a new parent because they weren't able to get through it and understand it and understand that, you know, a lot of what they're experiencing can be treated either through uh, supports like the ones that Panda offers, psychological supports in the community or medication if that's what they need to do. And when they get back on track, they realise that had they reached out for support earlier, they may have been dealing with a less extreme, you know, uh, presentation that they had to deal with uh, with their community. Right, okay. And just, just uh, on that point, mm -hmm. you sort of just mentioned about your website there, panda.org.au. Yep. Yep. There are some wonderful resources yeah. there to, to refer to as well. But I guess uh, that's from the individual's point of view. But um, from a family and friends' mm -hmm. point of view, and uh, how can they support a parent who's suffering from mental illness mm -hmm. like anxiety or depression. Mm. What can they be doing? Yeah. I think first, you know, really feeling that you're able to talk about it. So, you know, we know that in every relationship we have as a community, whether it's an intimate relationship or a broader relationship, we often look for the right time to have a conversation or to bring something up. And when we see somebody we care about struggling, you know, we second guess and we doubt ourselves and whether or not we're reading a situation correctly. And I think, you know, it's really important that you know that you can't break people in asking, hey, are you okay? Yeah. You know, or you don't look like you're coping with this the way you normally would, or is there anything I can do? You know, and just having a gentle conversation and knowing that it doesn't have to flow a certain way, just putting your hand out metaphorically and yeah. saying, can I help you is just so important. So, you know, I think it's, it's, it's important that people know that they just need to acknowledge that they're seeing something. And quite often our callers to the helpline will say the reason why I reached out to Panda was because my husband said, you look like you're struggling. And I knew it wasn't just then my own experience. So I knew then somebody else was really seeing that what was happening didn't look and feel right. So, uh, you know, I think engaging. And there's no cost to engaging with Panda, whether you're re yeah. reaching out to our helpline or whether you're going online, you can check in on how you're going and there's no cost to that in terms of people don't need to know, you don't need to pay, it's a free service. The team at Panda are there for you. And I think sometimes just getting a read on how you're going rather than doing that shooting and musting and oh, I don't know if I'm going okay and getting caught up in your own mind is really important. Yeah, no, and, and that's a really important point that people don't have to pay for the mm -hmm. service and, 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 and what a wonderful service it is and, and you've got people on call at, at, at all times of the day as well. Um, I know it might sound like I'm sort of going back over mm -hmm. things, but I, I guess... Uh, there, there must be a sort of a trigger point that maybe you would go, that's a definite time to make a call mm. if you're a new parent. And, and But also I think the, the one that's surprising, certainly for me, mm. was the expecting parents, mm. the ones who haven't had the child yet yeah. experiencing. I guess, you know, what sort of advice would you give on that, on that mm. point about when you actually should do it? I mean, there's people who would yeah. say things to you, but within yourself, mm. I think 
knowing that right point? Yeah. How, do, how do you identify that? I think, you know, it's that flag. So we all have this sense of self and flag when we know something's right or wrong. And I think being able to acknowledge that that flag's gone off and maybe it's gone off, you know, a couple of times and you, you really do need to acknowledge that it's there. But if, if the way that you're feeling psychologically and the thoughts that you're having and the way that you're connecting with people uh, don't feel healthy or that, you know, you, that becomes a barrier to you living your life. So the things that you would normally do, so, you know, if you love listening to music but you can't be bothered turning on music, right. if you love to read or have a bath but that seems too difficult and you feel bogged in the emotional experience, you know, if you can't carve out time to look after yourself or get to the point where you feel like negatively towards being a parent, which is so very normal, um, or, you know, your baby, then it's time to seek help and reach out for support. And there is nothing wrong with any of those experiences. They are also very normal because, you know, the identity of being a parent isn't one that we actually take on until we have our baby. And then we're just learning through example. And that's a really rough time for people. Right, yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess that getting help, mm. um, where, where, where do you go? Mm. Do you make a phone call? If you live remotely, how yeah. does that affect you? I mean, Australia's a big place. That is. Um, how, we, how do we navigate the tyranny of distance mm. And, mm. and making sure that the support network is there? Yeah. Well, how, how, can you explain that a little bit more for us? Yeah, so there are many, many support options. And I think, you know, again, PAND is one of those organisations that aims to support people where they're at. And noting that, you know, our helpline is only available Monday to Friday, 9am till 7.30pm. And we know that people struggle... 24-7 um, and many of our community will have heard us advocating for increased funding to be able to deliver services in the after hours period. Um, but ultimately, Panda is there as a source of support. You can visit our website and do the mental health checklist if, you know, it's after hours um, and get a read on how you're going or you can call our helpline. But we also support people to access general practice. So GPs are a really good way of checking yeah. in. And if you've got somebody who's been seeing you and supporting you for a significant time, they'll know that what you're experiencing is normal or not. Um, there's also, you know, wonderful services out there in terms of, in, you know, there's a whole lot of uh, range of supporters regardless of where you live. So there are, you know, other psychological services that you can get referred to such as, you know, Gidget House. There are, you know, Peachtree do amazing work for community up in Queensland. There's, you know, online apps like SMS for Dads and Mum Mood Booster, um, which are really great resources. Um, and we're all in it together as services that provide support to families. You know, we really want to be able to connect people with the right supports. And quite often it takes people reaching out a few times for support to get it. But we do say that if people are really struggling, so if they fear that they are going to harm themselves or their babies or their partners, uh, you know, we always ask people to take that really seriously and seek, seek support, not only from Panda, but, you know, visit your emergency department or get involved with emergency services if that's the case. And thankfully, that's not the case for yeah. many people. You, you mentioned there, which is an interesting point, you mm. mentioned the word dads. Mm. Um, maybe if you could just share some statistics with us, yeah. a little bit about how many people are affected by mm. this and, and the fact that it's not just the mums, it's also oh, most the dads. Certainly. Yeah. yeah, really good point, you know, and we are trying to amplify the needs of dads, you know, which we know as we become more and more aware of men's experience in this period that, you know, there are so many times that we miss out on both assessing how dads are going, both, you know, formally in terms of doing checklists and things, but also in checking in with them because they're not as uh, present sometimes through work commitments and life commitments at some of those health checks that mums get picked up at. Um, but we do know that ultimately one in ten dads and one in five mums wow. will experience amazing, perinatal... It? Oh, it's huge, perinatal anxiety. those are the anxiety. ones that's reported, isn't it, really? Exactly, yep. So we know that screening in Australia is really good and better than most countries internationally, but we still know that a lot of people don't get screened um, because they fall through the gaps or they can't attend the appointment at which they're screened. Um, so we do advocate for people getting, you know, that support wherever possible. We also know that COVID's had a massive impact, and you asked about this yeah. earlier, and I, I didn't get to it, but, you know, for Panda and many of the organisations that support people, we've seen a doubling in the number of people that have been reaching out for support, and that's mums and dads. Um, and, you know, ultimately their experience has been really varied because the, the trigger points haven't just been about 
becoming a new parent. They've been about becoming a new parent while my husband's just been stood down from work as a result of COVID or becoming a new parent. And as a woman, I was set to go back into the workplace early and support the mm. family. My, my husband was going to parent, but now I'm working from home as well and that's not happening. So there are so many things that have put significant pressure on people that were just unexpected and you know health, health services haven't been there in the same way um, yeah. so it's been a really disrupted time and, and I, I guess um, it does affect relationships mm. um, and, and I, I sort of I mean how does that sort of manifest itself mm. and and um, you know obviously COVID when you've been mm. in lockdown at mm. times certainly uh, in, in for long periods like in Victoria yeah. How does it manifest itself and, and, and how do couples see their way through that? Mm. I think that's a really good question. You know, we know that across the board services, you know, both in Victoria but more broadly nationally throughout COVID as people have become disrupted, have experienced more partner violence. You know, there have been more incidents of disharmony within relationships, uh, you know, and when you add that to the fact that in the perinatal period, that sense of coupledom and intimacy and connection is already disrupted mm. as people kind of struggle to focus on this new little being. Um, you know, I think families have been really struggled through this period and knowing how to parent when home and workplace are colliding. Um, but ultimately, you know, we are experiencing more people seeking support as a family unit and, you know, we are talking more about the impact of uh, perinatal vulnerability and perinatal, you know, mental illness on the family unit and not just the, the partner in your immediate family, but, you know, nanas and pops and, you know, aunts and uncles. Mm. And, and during COVID, we had a lot more grandparents reaching out to Panda because they were seeing on calls that families were struggling um, and didn't know how to check in. And because they couldn't be there face to face so and get a it? read, yeah, so they were they were checking in with us. And, you know, that's when Panda's really proud and through the support of partners like, you know, Baby Bunting, uh, really proud to be able to do creative ways of connecting with community. So it's been great. Mm. And I guess one of the, one of the things that you, you mentioned families, you mentioned talking and you mentioned, mentioned communities. Mm. And I think one of the things that really you know, stood out to me about when we've, we've talked about the role of Panda and what you're doing, mm. but how are you supporting those, those people from a culturally diverse or linguistically diverse mm. background? Um, how, do you, how do you help that? Because, you know, that often can become a barrier mm. to, to the, the, the requesting of support or, yep. or being able to articulate the need for support or whether there's a cultural mm. barrier to asking for mm. support. How, how, how's, how's Panda addressing that? I think first and foremost, actually identifying that there is an inequity in how we're able to support community. And, you know, one yeah. of the things I've been really proud of is the team at Panda doing that sort of internal reflection on what it is that we do have for our more vulnerable communities. And we recognise that, you know, culturally and linguistically diverse communities are not necessarily vulnerable, but there are access barriers for people for whom English yeah. is a second language. And whether that's written or spoken, we know that we need to be held to account because we are funded predominantly through taxpayers' money. Um, and we want to make sure that the services Panda supports as free services meet people where they are. So when we think about that and think about the fact that much of what we had produced historically was in English, uh, it wasn't necessarily at the right level to support health literacy and access, it became more important for us to have a look at the fact that the birth corridors of this country and the places where communities are growing and thriving are often communities where culturally and linguistically diverse communities are. So, um, you know, we felt that we had to hold ourselves to account and start building our pamphlets in, in language and ensuring that we were starting to have verbal conversations and by that we are working at the moment on a series of videos about just a one minute what is perinatal mental illness for communities in language and trying to translate some animations so that we've got this really lovely suite of resources that start to welcome people into understanding their experience. 
and gaining access to those those resources. Mm -hmm. Is that on the web or is that? Yep. So through? we're working on a campaign yep. that's a really big push for 2021 in terms of opening up accessibility. So as they become, uh, you know, or, or are developed, they'll be on our website, easily accessible. We'll also be ensuring that they get out to uh, child health nurses or maternal health nurses and, and public hospitals and things and that communities can access them through a range of different ways. Well, that's fantastic mm. and just amazing the work that, that, that your team's doing in the space and mm. uh, take my hat off to you and the team. I think what I might do is see if there's any questions in the, in the comments box. Okay. No, no questions at the moment. We've been doing such a we've, good job. Uh, we've, we've talked a lot, <laughs> Julie. Um, but, but first of all, you know, once again, th thank you for joining us tonight. It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, the work that your team is doing um, how you go about it as well is just sensational and and at baby bunting we're we're very proud to be associated and and, and as I said we're raising the funds two dollars mm -hmm. at every transaction if you could mm -hmm. um, also online and and we're also taking donations to the store support center I have mentioned the website um, panda.org yep. com uh, sorry <laughs> let me start again panda.org dot au yep. um, and uh, for any any of the support resources but uh, Julie, thank you so much. We appreciate it and all the great work that you've been doing. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Thank Matt. you.